friends, hello. How are you all doing? My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today is the start of another weekly reading vlog. I hope you all are doing really, really well. I am filming today in my kitchen slash dining room. I felt like spicing things up today. I've never filmed in here before, so we'll see how the audio quality is. So today is Saturday and I have the entire day off. I slept in, yes. So for this week's reading vlog, I want to challenge myself a little bit. I still have so many books left on my July TBR stack in my pile. So I really wanna challenge myself for this weekly reading vlog for the few days that I typically vlog to read as many books as I can. So in doing that, I actually picked out my shortest books and it is my goal to finish them because they are ridiculously short. So we have these three books. Can you believe that these are three books though? Like the size of each of them individually is ridiculous, but then put them all together, this isn't even the size of like a normal book, I feel like normal. What does that even mean? So we have on here, of course, Aquamarine by Alice Hoffman. Super short. I've been wanting to read this all month already. I am kind of hoping that I can take myself to like a park or a beach and just read this in one sitting because it is so short. Then we have a choreo poem, which is for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough by Entuzake Shange. So I am so excited to read this. It is kind of like mixed media. Um, we have a lot of poems. Both of my cats are in the kitchen now and grooming themselves. So if you hear background noise that's a little uncomfy, like licking flesh, that's what that is. I am so geeked to read this. I am so excited for it. I honestly have no idea what to expect going into it. I don't know the topics. I don't know what's gonna be covered, but I'm just really excited. Again, very short. And it's a choreo poem, which I have never read before. I'm just so excited to get to this. And then lastly, we have Vermeer's Milkmaid by Manuel Rivas. This is a short story collection, super small, that I found thrifted a while ago, quite a few years ago, I believe. And I forgot to mention when I redid my TBR and this was my pick, I forgot to mention, and I totally forgot about it, that this book is also translated from Galatian. I am so excited to read this. Oh my gosh, it's only like 120 pages, amazing. So I really do believe that I can read all three of these in this week's reading vlog. And hi, hi Umi, he's trying to figure out how to get into my shirt. <laughs> sir, sir. I wanted this to be a calm start to my reading vlog and now I just feel like it's chaos. Hello, honey. So I definitely think that I can read all three of those books this week's reading vlog. Like if I can just do one book a day, each one of them is like just over 100 pages. So I am setting good expectations for myself. I am trying to kind of like properly set aside time to read them and I would love to get my butt out of the apartment. To be honest, I, that's all I want to be on this channel is honest and candid and open because I think we can all relate to these feelings. The past two weeks have been incredibly difficult for me. I'm just going through a lot of personal stuff and I feel like for the past two weeks I have been like clinging, clinging. My subconscious has been clinging to the edge of a depressive spiral. Like I am trying so incredibly hard not to fall into a deep dark pit. And I know that <laughs> that visual might hit some of you and you might really relate to that feeling where it's like you are actively trying so hard not to fall into a depressive spiral. Sometimes they are incredibly inevitable. That's what mental health is. We can't help when we have depressive slumps. We can't help when we fall into like weeks long of just depression and anxiety and stuff. So I'm trying to do little things to curb that. <laughs> and I feel like that's really all you can do, um, especially as somebody who has struggled with a lot of mental health issues. So that's just kind of my goal for this weekly reading vlog. I want to feel good. I want to get out of the apartment and experience new things and treat myself to reading in nature or exploring or just trying to stay out of a depressive spiral. And I think the only way for me personally to do that is to be out and about, to be outside. I know I feel so much better when I come back home after being out. And I feel like I can look at my problems and my life with new eyes. It feels a little bit, I can handle it 
rather than just staying in my apartment. Does this make sense? I think especially after COVID and lockdowns and stuff and just feeling stuck in one place. I don't know about you all, but I definitely get a feeling of like, of feeling sadder when I'm in my apartment now. My apartment used to bring me so much joy, but because of COVID and being stuck in here, it's definitely become a place where I kind of immediately wake up with anxiety. I wake up with this kind of feeling of dread. So just let me know if you know what I mean and just know that you you are not alone if you're feeling that way too. You are definitely not alone. I know I'm not alone in that feeling. But that aside, mental health TED talk over. My plan for today, it is about noon o'clock now on Saturday. I have to go grocery shopping and I thought while I'm out grocery shopping, why not treat myself? This is what I'm going to be doing for myself today. I'm going to treat myself to Goodwill. I'm going to go thrifting see if there's anything there. So I'm gonna go do that as well. So I will take you along with me to Goodwill and then I'm gonna go grocery shopping. So I'll be out for a few hours. I know kitties, it's hard to imagine that I'm not gonna be here. I'm always here, I know. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, gear up, get these beautiful babies off of my lap, which is so hard to do and go explore, go thrifting, go grocery shopping, stock my fridge. I know that that makes me feel better too. So again, just thank you so much for being here, friends. I really do genuinely hope you're all doing okay. Stay in there, stick to it. We got this, we can handle stuff. We are stronger than we know, even though sometimes it feels like life comes at us a little bit harder than we anticipated. So yeah, I love you all. Okay, be okay, you're okay. Okay, and I will check in with you all a little bit later. I just got done with an absolutely amazing engagement session with one of my couples on the most beautiful freaking beach I think I've ever been to. I'm so excited to share edited photos with them and with you all, maybe tomorrow. I'm hoping I can stay up a little bit tonight and edit because wow, it is so freaking stunning. I can't believe I've been able to go to the beach twice in two weeks for engagement sessions, but wow, the sun is starting to set right now. I'm about to head home. Today has been really it flew by so fast, but my partner and I decided to deep clean our entire apartment 
and that took from 10 a.m. until I had to leave. But yeah, my day has definitely just been cleaning all day, feeling pretty exhausted, but being able to come to the beach today and work with my absolutely lovely couple is absolutely amazing. So I'm really, really happy about that and I'm really excited. They warm my freaking heart because I actually photographed the bride-to-be for this upcoming wedding. I photographed her daughter's wedding last summer and that's how she found me. <laughs> I love that so much. I love that so much. So I get to see my couple again for this upcoming wedding. And I just, I just, I love that so much. I can't believe like so many different family members like find me. Yeah, it's just been a really good day. And coming to the beach just definitely like woke me up and like perked me up. It's exactly what I needed. Last night I was able to get halfway through for Colored Girls and wow it is super unique i definitely find myself not quite understanding what's happening or questioning what this is so i definitely feel a little lost but then i have to remember like this is a choreo poem it's supposed to make me think it's supposed to make me confused i think because it is so lyrical and so poetic and strange and surreal but very very profound in the topics it's talking about so there's definitely some content warnings because they do discuss sexual assault and like institutional racism and wow i and i just had to remember too i'm like okay this is written in the 70s just i just need to like let go as a reader and just like experience this book so it's definitely an experience but i am enjoying it i am excited to give you all my full synopsis tomorrow but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and drive home ah oh, my heart is so happy i wish i could just stay on the beach a little bit longer but i am quite hungry i want to go home and actually relax now because i had a whole day of cleaning and then i had to work so i'm excited to relax and then work some more by editing but maybe i can hang out i don't know we'll see that's my rambly, rambly update for you all. <laughs> So it is about 12.30 on Monday now. I have spent my entire morning editing some photos from last night's session. I'll pop some photos over here because it was just so freaking lovely. This couple decided to bring their own like props and stuff and I just absolutely love when couples want to incorporate elements of their relationship and their hobbies and personalities into their photo sessions. This couple in particular really loves wine tasting together and they ride motorcycles together and they absolutely love water so they knew they wanted to do their engagement session at the beach and they're getting married on the beach in August that I get to be there for and I'm just really excited for that too and it was such a beautiful day the most beautiful beach I've ever been to so it was quite the success if I do say so myself now it is Monday I only have one more full day of this vlog which is tomorrow Tuesday to finish two more books I have not been making the progress that I've been wanting to make with this challenge, but I think I can still do it because I have nothing else going on for today. I've already responded to client emails and edited and scheduled social media posts all this morning. So I'm feeling pretty ahead of it, which means I have the entire rest of the day. It's only 1230 now. I have the entire day to do as I please, which is to read more. Just now, I was able to finish reading for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. And wow as i mentioned last night when i was chatting with you all this is super unique this is not like anything else i have ever read so it definitely took me out of my comfort zone it definitely took me out of my 
normal reading experience. I wasn't quite sure the best way to read it, but I would suggest if you are interested in reading this, trying to do it in one sitting because I had to do it over the course of like three different sittings and it felt very difficult to like kind of get back into the rhythm of it. I think if you start it from the beginning, get familiar with the writing style and the rhythm of it, it will fly by and it might make a little bit more sense. But basically this is like a musical performed play thing. So in it we have these like five or six women who come out and they're wearing different colored dresses on the stage. So in here there are also descriptions of where they stand. Like it, here it says the lady in brown exits into the stage right, the lady in red enters from the stage left, like things like that. So there's kind of like this chorus of women. They alternate speaking these stanzas and lines and then it will say in here like the song blah 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 starts playing and the ladies all start dancing like things like that so it is very visual but it's also very hard to visualize because it is still like a poem so it it's just so unique and I just really enjoyed that I love reading something that like I have just never experienced before while there are a lot of sections in here like I showed in my little montage there are just really big chunks of long stories almost like this. They're still written in kind of like poetry format, but it's more of like a narrative, but you are never really introduced to the characters. They'll just start mentioning people like by their first names and you're like, but who are they? We don't know because there's not, not a linear story in this at all. But then all of a sudden the story will progress and you become kind of like attached to the characters and just that like two page span and then something horrific happens to them. And it was super jarring, especially at the very end here. The last one was absolutely like I clutched my heart I was like what oh my gosh that was really intense but then throughout it too like I mentioned yesterday there are some content warnings for sexual assault and rape and stuff and just some very heavy really big topics rape and abortion and obviously some unaliving discrimination and racism and toxic male culture there's just a lot going on in here but I did end up annotating quite a lot so I wanted to share a few passages with you all that I thought were incredibly beautiful and insightful. I'm going to read, this one is on page 57 here, this little stanza. It is at the very end of a longer poem. Earlier in the stanza there's a line that says, ever since I realized there was someone called a colored girl, an evil witch, a bitch, or a nag, I've been trying not to be that and leave bitterness in somebody else's cup. So that is kind of where the poem starts. And what's interesting about this book too is the vernacular. So just in the writing style, could is spelled just CD, would is just WD. There are a lot of abbreviations, not a lot of capitalization and I just think it's really amazing. So I will go ahead and read this little passage here. So this is a requiem for myself, because I have died in a real way, not with aqua coffins and doo-wop Cadillacs. I used to joke about when I was messing around, but a real dead lovin' is here for you now, because I don't know anymore how to avoid my own face wet with my tears, because I had convinced myself colored girls had no right to sorrow. And I lived and loved that way and kept sorrow on the curb allegedly for you, but I know I did it for myself. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand being sorry and colored at the same time. It's so redundant in the modern world. Oh my god, it's so poignant and sharp and beautiful and like his writing style is freaking immaculate. Like, oh, so good. And then I am going to read the last the last big kind of poem here. Um, it's very fragmented, so it won't take very long, but I just felt so like <gasps> this was the perfect way to end and encapsulate everything that was kind of like talked about here. I sat up one night, walking a board house, screaming, crying, the ghost of another woman who was missing what I was missing. I wanted to jump up out of my bones and be done with myself, leave me alone and go on in the wind. It was too much. I fell into a numbness till the only tree I could see took me up in her branches, held me in the breeze, made me dawn dew. The sun wrapped me up swinging rose light everywhere. The sky laid over me like a million men. I was cold, I was burning up, a child, and endlessly weaving garments for the moon with my tears. I found God in myself and I loved her. I loved her fiercely. Oh my God, just so beautiful.
so beautiful. It, it just makes me feel something and I can't put my finger on like what the heck I'm feeling, but like it's softness, it's, it's tenderness. At the very beginning of reading this book, I almost felt like a sense of anxiety while reading because it was so rich with descriptions and other people and parties and words and it felt hectic. The writing style felt incredibly hectic, very, very fast paced. But then by the end of it, this softness came in, this like, oh my God, just like rich, soft femininity and ugh, I really loved it. It was just a whole experience in the course of like 80 pages. Besides having like beautiful language and definitely making me feel that softness, that tenderness, it didn't have like a super large emotional impact on me. I'd be curious to see how much I remember about this book, but I will absolutely be recommending it to so many people. I definitely recommend it to you all if you're comfortable with some of the content warnings I described. This was just such a unique read, like truly hands down, such a unique read. Yeah, four stars. We'll see how it sits with me by the time my July wrap-up happens. I do tend to change my ratings at the time of my wrap-ups because I've had more time to sit with it and think about it and see how frequently it comes up in my mind or if it doesn't come up at all. So there is that book, the first book of my challenge. So since I have some time today to sit and chill and read, I'm gonna pick up Vermeer's Milkmaid by Manuel Rivas first. I mentioned this at the beginning of this vlog that this is a collection of short stories and it is translated from Galatian by Jonathan Dune or Dunn. So I'm really looking forward to this one, itty bitty yet again. I'm really excited. I just absolutely love this cover. Also, let, like, let's talk about it. it. Kind of reminds me of like an old vintage postcard. Well, yeah, that makes sense because there's a freaking stamp on it. <laughs> I'm not very original, am I? So I'm very excited. When the heck was this even published? Let's find out. So this was published in 1995 the year I was born. And what I love about this one is that whoever owned it before me annotated the absolute crap out of it. I freaking love that. I love that. I never heard of this author or this book, so I'm really excited. I found it at a thrift store a few years ago. So I'm gonna start with this. I might put on like an ambient video or something so I can like just really sit down and immerse myself in reading. I will check in with you all later when I finish Vermeer's Milkmaid. <laughs> chips and eat this. I, I'm probably gonna watch a show while I eat because that's comforting to me. Tuesday morning, iced coffee time. I'm always so curious when I'm on here and I'm drinking an iced coffee, does it make you all want an iced coffee? <laughs> because sometimes I see, you know, YouTubers drinking something so delicious and then it like makes my mouth water. So I'm curious, does this entice you? So last night I did finish reading Vermeer's Milkmaid by Manuel Rivas. This was so I don't know the word for it. It was interesting. It was vague. I feel like this is a work that could be completely analyzed by somebody who is way smarter than I am, which it was. So I had showed yesterday that there are some annotations here from the previous owner of this book and they only annotated three stories, but what they were annotating, I was like, 
you are so smart. Like you are probably like a huge like English major, writing major, just a literary person because they were just like making all of these notes from short stories. And I'm like, how can you gather this much information from just the writing style, adjectives that were used, how characters interacted with each other. Like this annotator, whoever owned this copy before would be like psychoanalyzing these characters and being like, they feel no sense of control or they are hypersexualized and like all of these things. Like it was just so interesting. And I low key wish they had annotated the entire book because their notes were just so fascinating to me. And it really helped my reading experience, I will say, because, you know, it's so easy as a reader to just kind of like fly through a story without thinking about the greater theme or meaning or how the characters interact with each other, their relationships with each other, you know, them versus the world. So I just gained a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of insight from whoever annotated this book prior to me. And I just, yeah, I genuinely do wish they had annotated the entire copy because I feel like I would have walked away with a deeper sense of meaning from these stories. But my brain just doesn't quite work like that. Like it definitely worked like that when I was in like AP English in high school where I could read a poem and just annotate the crap out of it and dissect every little meaning. But my brain doesn't work like that anymore. I read now for pleasure. I don't need like a bigger meaning. And if there is a bigger meaning, like I feel like it just comes pretty naturally now as a reader where I'm like, ah, I see. Does that make sense? Am I, am I rambling or what am I saying? So I did enjoy this collection. It was so freaking short. It was really easy to read and there was something so comforting about this book. I think majority of these stories do take place in Spain. They were so comforting though because majority of them felt like they could take place at any time in history. So I really did enjoy that. I liked that it was so loose. This time period was very vague and you could just kind of put whatever you imagine into it. So some some of my favorite stories in here, I had like three or four that I was like, oh wow, this is good. I think overall though, the writing was so wonderful. This translator, Jonathan Dunn or Dune, did a really wonderful job of translating because the writing style just really flowed super well. So my favorite stories in here was You'll Both Be Very Happy. That one was really good. It follows like two doctors and their families and they are in a house together visiting each other and they're kind of hosting like this dinner party and then the power goes out, the electricity goes out, there's a really really big storm. Everyone's kind of a little bit frightened but then one of the guests there says like oh to pass the time I can if anyone has a deck of cards I can read your fortune and he shuffles it like multiple multiple times and keeps getting the same card for who he's reading for and he keeps reshuffling so you're getting this ominous sense that like this card is not good but it shows up like multiple times in a row so it's just kind of like this guy trying to cover up the fact that it was bad it's very ominous I love the atmospheric setting so much like moody rainy house oh yeah then there was um hi Winston look at that rat tail hello then there was one called Havana's vast cemetery that I really liked I don't know why I liked it I I it's really short it was maybe like four pages long and I don't know I just really liked that one it felt nostalgic it felt strange and surreal and wacky and I, I really like that. There's another one in here called The Girl with the Pirate Trousers. That one was super meta. When starting the short story you're thrown right into the middle of something and you're kind of like what is happening? You're trying to get some background on these characters and then they're doing this act and you're like what are they doing? I'm so confused. And then it pulls you out of that from a different kind of like aerial perspective so you can see the whole piece of the puzzle and wow that one was so good. I loved that one. It was so well written and like really meta, made you really think and I, I just really enjoyed it. It was a big question of like morality when there's like no right or wrong answer and, and you just don't know which way to go forward. Oh, it was so good. And then the last one that I really liked here was Conga Conga. There are five stories after that that I didn't really feel super connected to so Conga Conga was the last one I had and that one was super messed up because it follows this guy who's very wayward. He's kind of lost his life. He's like an artist. Somebody is 
of course, whacking some weeds. So he decides to work as a clown for children's birthday parties. And one of the kids at this party is like trying to kill him because he's just a snot. You know, there's like that big moral question of like, are kids born altruistic? <laughs> like they're always born good and then they're taught to be bad. But like, I just feel like sometimes they're just bad seeds and some kids are just like really freaky to me. Like they are just evil little gremlins. Can you tell that I really don't want kids in the future? But anyway, um, yeah, this kid like really creeped me out. Any story that has like an evil kid in it will always make me want to vomit. Like it, it really elicits this like uncomfortable feeling in me. But yeah, this little kid wants to kill this clown. And then the story ends with the clown in the middle of taking revenge and it was really creepy and I really liked it. So yeah. And in reading that story in particular, I definitely felt like this month, while it's been pretty good for reading wise, it really made me miss reading horror and thrillers. There is something so readable about thrillers and mysteries and not knowing where a plot is going. And it's not like this where it's like super meta literary fiction. I feel like there are so many stories in here that definitely have a bigger meaning, but it kind of went over my head. But I loved how this author perfectly wrapped up every little short story, no matter how short it was. If it was like two pages or 12 pages long, it wrapped up so beautifully. And the last sentence, always made me feel something. So I just think it's a really good collection. I want to read way more by this author. I would love to read, I don't know if he has any novels out. Like I said, this came out in like 1995. So I would love to look up to see if he's had any more work translated into English and if there are any like full novels because his writing style, even though it's translated, is just so stunning. It's very atmospheric. It's very like comforting and nostalgic like you're in a dream like things feel familiar but there's just always something off so overall i think i'm gonna give this like four stars i'm not sure i didn't feel super attached to this book it was really easy to read there were definitely some stories that are gonna stick with me but i mean it's hard to like rate a whole collection of short stories but i i did enjoy this one so i would say like 3.75 to 4. I did enjoy it a lot, but I'll be curious to see how it sticks with me again. So that is Vermeer's Milkmaid. So now um, it is in the morn, so I have to get ready for a physical therapy appointment I have coming up here in like an hour or so. From there, I'm going to be going to my parents' house to check on their cats while they're out. And while I'm there, it is supposed to be getting up to like 80 degrees today, which is lovely. So I think I'm going to bring my swimmy and I'm going to lay out in the sun because I don't have a backyard. I just want to soak up the sun. So I'm going to bring my swimsuit and aquamarine and hopefully get a little bit of a tan while wearing sunscreen, friends. Always wear sunscreen. And yeah, read Aquamarine in one sitting. Super quick, super fun. I feel like this is gonna be a good time. I can absolutely read this in one sitting. It is like so tiny. But I thought I will also bring with me In the Palm of Darkness by Myra Montero. I actually did start this before I started my challenge and I totally forgot to mention it to you all. But I did get to page 34. And what's wild about this book that I didn't realize is it's only 180 pages. So um, this will definitely be the next book that I read that's a little bit longer. This is translated from Spanish, also written in the 1990s. I really love the vibes. I really love the story and where it's going. It is bouncing every other kind of chapter is bouncing perspectives. One is from this man who's always grown up in kind of like the Haiti region and he's talking about his past and his childhood. And then another is a scientist from Cuba and he's talking about his kind of tumultuous marriage, his interest in biology and frogs, kind of the start of his quest of traveling to Haiti to find this endangered frog called the blood frog. So I'm just thoroughly enjoying it. I really love the writing style. And then once I finish both of these books, I only have two books left on my July TBR, but they are two chunky books. I'm hoping I can finish both of those before the end of this month because we only have like 10 days left of July. So I really need to like get it going. I really want to get to both of those books. But in continuing with my rambliness today and in this vlog, I feel like I'm very chit chatty. My partner and I are going on vacation very soon at the very end of this month. So I will be doing my August TBR video ahead of time so I can pack like as many books as possible. For that vacation, my partner and I decided that we are going to just be really chill. We're not going to make any plans. We're just going to go there, see how we feel but we did talk about like just bringing a bunch of books and just relaxing 
after the past few months that we've had, that's really what we want. Um, or I guess after the past like two years of our life, we haven't been able to go on like a, a super proper vacation in a while. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I am thinking that, you know, if I can't finish like, let's say Watership Down in July, then I can absolutely bring it with me on vacation. So yes, that is the end of my rambly chit chat. So I will check in with you all a little bit later. Cheers! <music>
friends. It is another day, another iced coffee. Mm, so good, so good. I didn't get a chance to vlog last night because I was invited to go hang out with some very, very old friends, which was so lovely. And they have a pool, we went swimming, we ate pizza and just like reminisced on our kind of like old friendship because I haven't seen them in like years and it was so nice it was so lovely mm -hmm. so I obviously did not vlog anything yesterday in terms of that but we were there until about like 10 30 at night just sitting around getting eaten by mosquitoes and talking about life and oh, it was really needed and I think yesterday with being able to lay out in the sun and then go swimming in a pool and hanging out with friends it honestly felt like the first day of summer for me. It hasn't quite felt like summer for me yet. And I don't know, it was just kind of that feeling of like childhood summer, you know, where it's like you wake up early and you spend as much time as you can outside and then you relax at home and then you go back out, like go swimming. Like it felt like a childhood kind of summer feeling. So that was beyond lovely and beyond needed. But anyway, let's chat about some books because I'm gonna be wrapping up this vlog here. This morning, I was able to get halfway through In the Palm of Darkness by Myra Montero. Oh my God, I am loving this book. I am loving this book. That glossy cover is really starting to bug me though. I'm not going to lie. Let's see if I can maybe, I haven't even tried this. Maybe I can take it out of its sleeve. Stand by. Why did I not think of this before? Oh, oh my gosh, so much better. Look at that, there we go. <laughs> I'm glad that was easy and I didn't rip the dust jacket. My gosh, I am really loving this book. It is eerie literary fiction. I think I did mention a little bit earlier about the plot, but in this book we are bouncing every other chapter is from the perspective of a scientist who is from Cuba and then a man who has always grown up in Haiti and grown up in the rainforests and the jungles and always tracking frogs and then the scientist is also into frogs as well. It is just so unique. I think that's the only word I can use. Like when I'm reading it I definitely feel completely immersed in the story but I still feel like I'm reading a piece of like really brilliantly written work so it's not easy to read but I still feel like I can still see like a movie in my head the descriptions of everything the characters in this are just so well-rounded and unique oh my god it's just so beautifully written too like oh my gosh who is this translated by because I know it's translated uh Edith Grossman thank you Edith Grossman for the English translation because it is beautiful so the scientist and the man who grew up in Haiti the man who grew up in Haiti's name is theory. Um, I don't know if we know the scientist's name. I can't remember. But um, together they are traversing the Haitian like mountainside and landscape trying to find this uh, almost extinct frog called the blood frog. And we're getting Theory's backstory and which is definitely content warning for that one. There are some topics of like kind of uncomfortable sex scenes and it's a little borderline like uh, yeah so just be cautious going into that but just talking about the kind of like the dirt and the grime of Port-au-Prince in Haiti, how dangerous it is, how like dead bodies just show up every single morning because there's just such a huge crime and violence rate in the city at this time and it's very dangerous, it's dangerous in the forest. But then Theory is talking about like the living dead and zombies in the forest and in the rainforest. And as the reader, I'm like, is this folklore? Does he really believe this stuff? Is it like kind of magical realism, a little bit of fantasy, or is it like a metaphor for like all the dangers that could be out there in terms of like wildlife, how certain animals or plants are just so incredibly deadly and poisonous. And then he talks about there's this thing called like the laws of water and he talks about how every time you enter a stream you need to ask for permission and you need to be open to the repercussions that might come from stepping into this body of water, how if two women step into the body of water they will become attracted to each other, like all of these different scenarios areas where if you step into the water something kind of catastrophic can happen. So it's talking about like the laws of nature but then also using these like hauntings that have been going on in these rainforests for years. He is trying to convince the scientist of them and tell him that there are so many dangers in the forest 
and if you become just so tunnel visioned into finding one frog you could really be harming the laws of the nature and it's just so engrossing and interesting and very very unique i think this is just such a unique story and i was definitely right in my five star prediction like i'm only halfway through so i was able to get halfway through this morning but like it is really coasting to a five star and i'm like praying that it does not disappoint me because wow i'm loving it the scientist himself has a really unique backstory too his wife is a marine biologist and she is having an affair with a female Male, like archaeologist I believe so there's just like all these fields of science which I freaking love and a lot of like marital issues and it's it's just so good it's so good it's so unique the scientist does suffer from a really brutal kind of attack while he's staying in Port-au-Prince and he doesn't really know who did it he wakes up and he's like all of his work is stolen and gone and so there are definitely forces against him here, either people who are intentionally trying to prevent him from finding this frog, or they just are kind of malicious in nature and are harming people for no reason. Sorry about that, friends. I had to take a quick phone call and I had to put you away. But yeah, I don't remember exactly where I was at with this book and talking about it, but rest assured, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm very excited to finish it. I only have like 80 or 90 more pages to go, so I'm hoping I can finish this in the next two days and then I can start another book because I lied in my update earlier in this vlog. I actually have three more books that I need to read by the end of this month to finish my July TBR stack and all three books I want to read so bad. So like I really need to work at this and I really need to prioritize reading right now because I only have a few days left of July already, which is terrifying to me. So I just really need to like read faster and read more. So hopefully I'll have some more updates for you all for my next vlog and especially in my July wrap up, which will be a little bit late because like I said, I will be on vacation. So that is In the Palm of Darkness. And that is the end of this reading vlog, friends. Thank you so incredibly much for being here. I appreciate you all so much, so much. And I hope you're doing really well wherever you are. And I'll see you very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!